ask. He's talking to me. What you ask, you, not him, you, you, not me, you, what you ask. It's okay to get people to pray for you. Today we're going to pray for you and I've picked people up to pray with you because I believe they have gifts of faith on their life. There's a, there's a gift of faith which is activated and the gift of faith work in places where people who maybe need that gift of faith and it unites. When the man come up to Jesus and says, Lord, I believe, but just help me in my unbelief. Jesus, acting in his faith, ignited that man's lack of faith, and it happened. Do you see what I'm saying? There are people with gifts of faith in their life that can... Look, you come with asthma. I destroy that thing. I've got something about asthma. I hate the rotten thing. I've seen it so many times healed. There's things in our life, legs I've seen grow. I don't care. I can see that. I can believe for it because I've seen it, and I can remember the lion and the bear. And there are certain things that you need to get people to pray for you. But when God says for you on your heart to do something, he says, what well, you will pray, pray it and believe it. You're looking for a loved one unsaved, pray and believe it. Build your faith. And it's good that two, two, you know, three chords are better than two and all that sort of stuff. And we twine together and we believe together and we pray together. That's great. And we've got a two agree on earth, it shall be done in heaven, blah, blah. It's all there. And you need partners in prayer. But you need to stand strong. And when your partner says, it doesn't look like it's happening, you say, hey, be quiet. Get behind me. I'm going for this. Yeah. Don't you take me off track. Oh, how's your sickness? Oh, they're not giving me a good report. They're, they're, they're doctors. Yeah, but remember the doctor. Be quiet. I'm going. You may be the wrong prayer partner for me. I'm going for this. Therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. Whatever you ask in prayer, the secret. Whatever you ask in prayer, says ask and you receive. How? In prayer. I'm amazed around the world how many people don't even know how to pray. God's not looking, as we heard in the first service, about eloquent prayers. He's just looking for you to be real. You know, I've heard these arrogant pastors, heard one of them say, you don't speak into my life until I look at your calluses on your knees, boy. Well, I don't have any calluses on my knees. I walk and talk. You just got to go for it in prayer. Okay, I just want to put up this slide just before I continue on. 10 things that hinder your prayer. This is from a, a preaching that I did on principles of receiving from God. These are some of the things here that in asking, which some of the ways that we can ask. You need to write these down. These will change your life, honestly. If you get these and you look at them and look at the things and, and meditate on them and, and, and you find these hindrances, your prayer life will absolutely transform. I'm telling you, without a doubt, this is gold. This is nuggets for you. You ready? In asking, there's different ways you can do it. There's asking, there's seeking. He says, ask and seek, right? And he says, knocking. In that verse in uh, Matthew, it says that fasting is another way. Fasting is not about twisting God's arm to do something. Fasting is about becoming in line with God and being more sensitive to the things of God. It's amazing what happens. Petition combined with weeping. Going for it. I've never weeped for years. Well, weep in your spirit for it. Really seek it. Yeah? Vow. Vow is important. You see Paul shaved his head and all sorts of things, but you've got to do it in God. Don't just try to... It's not about bending God's arm. It's about getting in, in what he's saying to you. Yeah? Wrestling with him. Remember Jacob in Genesis 32, I think it was? He wrestled with the angel, and the angel says, It's morning, let me go. And he says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. That is the attitude that we must have when we're seeking the things of God in prayer. By faith. All right, what are the hindrances? Here we go. Now, I'm not looking at the clock today. If you need to leave at 11.30, you go. But this is important. I have to tell you this stuff. And I don't mind if you have to go. Seriously, it's okay. Anytime. Unforgiveness. 
Unforgiveness in Mark chapter 11, 25 says, it says, when you stand praying, forgive. It says here that we just read, believe in your heart, receive it, it is yours, right? And then it says, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Now that's Jesus speaking, so that your father may forgive your sins in heaven. Two things you won't get in heaven for, straight easy, is, is blaspheming the Holy Spirit and not forgiving a brother. It says, your father won't forgive you. What's blaspheming the Holy Spirit? That's another subject on own, which I've taught on it. See me anytime. Unforgiveness, pride, it will get in the way of your prayer. James chapter 4 says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. He doesn't like pride because see, the devil had pride, didn't he? Lucifer, the great morning star, Satan, whatever you want to call him. He had pride and took some flock with him. You understand? He hates pride. Next one is unbelief. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. That will hinder you. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, King James Version. See, if you can't believe the giver, then how can you receive anything from him? You see, if I've given you this, and I say, here, take this, but you don't believe that I'm real with it, you won't take it, because you'll only want it back. If I say to you, listen, I I'm coming around this afternoon at 2 o'clock, I'll be there. You can either say, he won't come and you go out, or you can believe it and get ready for it. See what I'm trying to say? Unbelief will hinder you. The next one is doubt. Doubt will hinder. James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8 says, But let him ask in prayer without wavering. Anything to ask outside faith is doubt. Unbelief is the killer of faith. Quickly as we go through, wrong motives. Wrong motives will do it every time. James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, You ask and you receive not because you ask wrong. See, so you ask with the wrong motive, and that's why you receive not. I want the Mercedes. I don't want, I don't want to help anyone. Just give me the Mercedes. Whatever, I'm just mucking around. But you go know on saying, get your right motive. What is the motive and the desires from God? Someone, some, sometimes when God sees you and what you do, he'll oppress and he'll hold back some things just to sort of help you learn. But when you abuse the gifts that God gives you, that's not good either. Next one. Procrastination. Procrastination, James 2, verse 20. It says this, faith without works is... Hello, faith without works is dead. So you, you want to believe in something if you don't actually work in it, you're procrastinating and it won't come. Okay? Walk out in it. What you do today and what can you do today that you won't delay until tomorrow? Next one, seven for time. Refusing the word. Refusing the word. You see, disobedience. Proverbs 28, 9 says this. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayers, shall be an abomination. That's powerful. Did you hear that? Or you're busy writing. He that turns away from his ear from hearing, God's ear, the law, what God's put on your heart, even his prayer will be an abomination. You need to listen. Refuse it. Don't refuse it. Next one. Eight. There it is. Neglect. Neglect. Second Chronicles 15, 2b, it says, If you forsake him, he will forsake you. That's why it's important for us to do that. Connect. And ten. The last one. I don't think it shows up there too well. What have we got there? Neglect nine, is it? Negligence. Negligence. I'll have to tell you the last one. Negligence one Peter three seven. Negligence when the